Every single year, thousands of people fall for this scam around this time of year as the weather starts to warm up. The HVAC contractor will come to do an HVAC tune-up and they will say that your unit needs a new capacitor. Now this is one of the easiest things to repair on your HVAC unit. It costs between 10 and $20 and a lot of contractors are charging between 500 and I've even heard of quotes being up to $2,000 because people don't know how much a capacitor is and how easy it is to replace. So in today's video, we're gonna walk you through how to replace that capacitor, how to save hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. We're also gonna throw in some extra tips on how you can save money maintaining your unit. So make sure and stick around for the whole video. Today's video is brought to you by Mr. Cool, America's number one choice for quality, affordable DIY HVAC equipment and filter by offering quality HVAC filters shipped right to your door. All right, so here's the AC unit that we're gonna be demonstrating this with. And all of your AC units that look like this are going to be a split system. And you're gonna have a compartment right here that's specifically dedicated for your electronics. You also see a warning there signifying that there is potential danger here. So with that, I just wanna make sure that you are aware of the dangers here. Um, we're going to kill power to this unit, but please don't do this if you are not comfortable with working around electricity and using a voltmeter, things of that nature. So first of all, we're going to kill power to this unit. So we're simply gonna pull this disconnect out. And the way these work is you can flip them upside down and store them and they won't actually make a connection. So if the off is in the upright position, that's how that works. A lot of times though, I'll just set it right up here to be on the safe side, close that up. And that is not safe enough. We're actually going to take this cover off and we're gonna use our voltmeter to verify that there is no power here. So let's go ahead and get this taken off. And what we're gonna be using here is the Malco uh, two-in-one nut driver. Now this thing is awesome in that you can flip this over and pretty much all of the components on your HVAC unit, whether it's the furnace or this condenser, most of them are gonna be either a 5 16th or a quarter inch. So this is a really versatile tool. It's magnetic, you can flip it. So if you're interested in this or my other favorite HVAC tools, check out DIYHVAC.org and you can find all my favorite HVAC tools there. We also have a sizing guide if you're looking to replace your HVAC system. And we also have a frequently asked questions section that's really informative, that answers a lot of the questions that you guys might have. All right, so just like that, we've got our cover removed. Now you'll notice some extra components here. Um, this is a Micro Air Easy Start Flex. This is an awesome thing. If you haven't seen the video on this, I highly recommend that you check it out. But if you have a standard AC, this will not be here. You'll just have a contactor like this one. And there is the culprit that we're gonna be talking about in this video and that is the capacitor. These are the main two components that make this AC unit function how it should. Now to start with, I just wanna explain how this works. So the contactor, so you have your main power coming in through this whip here, going into this contactor. These are your two incoming leads. And then these two low voltage wires right here that come up through here, this goes directly to your thermostat. These basically signal for the contactor to come on. And what it does is it pulls a magnetic switch in here in, closing the contact, sending power from this side to this side. And this will energize your fan as well as the compressor. Now the purpose of the capacitor is to make sure that the phasing is correct. And this will store energy, we'll get into that. But there's a lot of misconceptions about what a capacitor is. I like to liken it as a battery that gives your, your car the, the energy it needs to start but it does a lot more than just that. But before we get into all of this, let's just verify that we don't have power here so that we're being safe. And then we'll talk more about our capacitor. So we have our Tessman multimeter here. This is an awesome little tool that's super cheap and really versatile, it auto detects. So what we're gonna do is just put our leads one on each here. Just verify that this is zero. And now a good thing to also do is to verify that this meter is working like it should. So our two um, line are gonna be these outside ones. So when we put our meter there, we've got 245 volts. So we've verified that this voltmeter does work and that we don't have power at our unit. Okay, so this next part is very critical. So as we said, these capacitors can hold energy just like the battery on your car. So the way that we're gonna discharge this is very easy. We're just gonna take an insulated screwdriver or it doesn't even have to be insulated as long as you're not touching anything metal. And all we're gonna do is touch 
these leads all together. I've got some contact with the metal tab there, so I'm just gonna arc these. And that's basically it. Now, if you can't reach yours, you could just use a pair of pliers to pull the tab off without touching anything, set it aside, and then you can now make contact there. So we're just gonna arc all these together. Now this is totally discharged. You can touch it, nothing will happen. I've never been popped by one of these, but I've heard of others having been. So just be aware of that. Next, we're just gonna make note of where our wires are. So typically the red wire is gonna be going to your common terminal. And once we take this off, you'll be able to see all the labeling just fine. This is part of our easy start. Um, again, if yours did not have this easy start, this wire would not be here. Typically this yellow wire goes from your hermetic pin to the compressor. So um, that's typically yellow and purple is always gonna be your fan. So let's go ahead and take this uh, strap off here and we'll show you what the labeling looks like here. So now you can see it more clearly. We have fan there, hermetic there, and we've got a C for common right there. Okay, so what I advise doing is take a picture or even a video from all angles so that you remember exactly where these wires go if you wanna replace your capacitor. Now, I just wanna mention something here. So a lot of people in the comments will say, well, we charge this amount because we have all of this overhead. It's not that we're just charging exorbitant amounts and that's totally fine. But if you as the homeowner don't wanna pay somebody's overhead for their business, you just wanna replace this capacitor, again, you can save hundreds if not thousands of dollars. There is a small amount of people that are totally taking advantage of customers because they don't know what a capacitor is. It's such a small and cheap thing and an easy repair. For all they know, it's like replacing the engine on your car and they totally get taken advantage of but you now have the knowledge to know what this is, how to replace it, how to replace it on other homes you might have or friends and family's homes and save them money as well. But the thing I wanna make clear is that not every HVAC contractor is a scam artist. There are some, but a lot of companies just have a lot of overhead and you can avoid paying that overhead by doing this repair yourself. So now that we have this capacitor out, we're gonna show you some tricks on how to make sure you get the right capacitor to replace it even a lot of times I'll tell people, get one of these and keep it in a junk drawer because it's gonna go out on the hottest day of summer. A lot of times contractors will wanna replace this during a maintenance in the springtime, but when they really go out is a super hot day in the middle of summer. So you wanna be prepared and have this in your junk drawer or somewhere in your garage where you can replace it easily and you know exactly how to do it. Okay, so now that we have our capacitor out, we can see that this is a 30 plus five MFD capacitor. Now, if you wanted to replace this capacitor, you would simply look up on Amazon or wherever 30 five or 30 plus five. And you just want to make sure that you're, you're putting in the right capacitor. Now in past videos, we've shown how to check the microfarads on your capacitor with a voltmeter. But if you don't have a voltmeter that's compatible for checking microfarads, if you just have one that's capable of reading ohms, which is this little horseshoe looking one, this will work. And I, I haven't shown up to this point how to, how to do that, but I'm gonna show you how to do that with this Tessman voltmeter. So again, this is an auto voltmeter, so it will auto detect. So if we take one of our leads and we go to common and we take one and go to fan, notice what happens as this auto detects. See how we're going up in ohms? Four, five, six. So this will continue to slowly rise. That means this is accepting a charge and this capacitor or this voltmeter rather is putting in about a half a volt, hardly any voltage at all. And then you notice it goes to auto. That means it's stopped accepting a charge. Okay, now if we do the same thing between common, so we're gonna put one lead on common and one on hermetic, we'll notice that the same thing happens, but a higher value. 140, 170, 200, 230, 280. So that number is rising. The main thing is that you wanna see these numbers moving up or down depending on what polarity you have. But if you have a bad capacitor, you will connect this to this and nothing will show up. It'll just say OL, or in this case, it'll just say auto as if nothing is reading. That means an open circuit. And that means that your capacitor is bad. 
Now, again, if you do have a, uh, a digital multimeter that reads microfarads, you can go between common and hermetic, and you should see whatever the value is, plus or minus, I think it's usually 5%, degree, uh, 5%. It's covered up on this one for whatever reason. So if you're within 5% of 30 between hermetic and common, then you're golden. And if you're within 5% of 5 between fan and common, then that capacitor is good. But this is a really easy way to check. Now, another thing that a lot of people comment on, they say, well, I, don't, I can't see anything on my capacitor. Maybe the label got burnt or ripped off or whatever. I'm gonna show you how to take the lid off of this and verify what size capacitor you need for your compressor and for your fan. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're just gonna go around and take all of the screws out of the top um, cover here. Okay, so we got all of those screws taken out. Now we're simply gonna lift up. And we can just rotate this 180 degrees if you have the uh, room, or you can just kind of set it aside. Now the first number that we're looking for is gonna be on the side of our fan. So we're gonna rotate these fins until we can see this label right here. Now it's upside down in this video, but you can see right there where it says cap 5.0 microfarads, right there. That indicates that the smaller number on your capacitor is going to be a five. Some of these I've seen in the past are tens or 7.5, that's pretty critical. So just make a note of that. And next we're gonna look at our compressor and do the same thing. Okay, so same thing on our compressor. You'll have a label on the side of the compressor and typically it's not gonna be faded because it's protected from sunlight and things of that nature. We can see right here that this is calling for a 30 microfarad capacitor at 370 volts. So typically your capacitor will say 370 to 440 volts and then it'll show the reading of what level it is, how many microfarads. So this particular unit would be a 30-5, but if you have a larger compressor that requires a larger um, capacitor, it could be a 70-7.5, but this is a, the best way to verify for yourself that you have the correct capacitor. So now that you know how to check that with a voltmeter or roughly what that process looks like, if someone's coming to you with a spring maintenance saying that you need a new capacitor because yours does not meet those values, just have them show you. If they can't show you, a lot of times you can catch them red-handed and you know that that capacitor is just fine, have them put it back in and never call them again. Now, if you don't know what size your capacitor is and you don't feel like going out there and fooling with it, but you still wanna be prepared in the event that your capacitor does go bad, the solution is this right here. This is called the Turbo 200, and this is a universal capacitor. It has a bunch of little tabs on the top, and we're gonna walk you through how to install this device on your AC unit. So here's what you're gonna see in your AMRAD Turbo 200X universal motor run capacitor. This capacitor will replace a five all the way up to a 97.5, and it can do multiple um, settings here. And we're gonna show you exactly what comes in the box. So we're just gonna use this as an example to replace our 30-5 capacitor that we just pulled from this AC unit. So you'll see what comes in this box. You've got a zip tie to fasten it down in case this is larger than the one you pulled out. And we also have a self-tapping screw as well as all of these little jumpers. And we're gonna show you exactly what these come in the box for. So if we go through here, we see first seven and a half, 10, 20, 50, five and five. Now, if we look down here, we can see what the exact um, measurement is. So 4.7 for this white 4 MFD and 5.7 for this white 6 MFD. So these are both close to five microfarads. That's why it says that. So for our fan, we could connect to either of these directly. We don't have to use any of the jumper wires. And then for our 30, we're gonna do simple addition here, 20 plus 10. We're gonna put a jumper between 20 and 10 and that's gonna give us 30 microfarads. So we could do this as many times as we want. If we wanted to add seven and a half to this amount, we'd just do a jumper from here to here. Or if we wanted to have a 70 microfarad uh, capacitor, we would just go from 50 to 20, 
and that would give us our 70. So for the purpose of this capacitor for this particular unit, this is all we have to do, and we'll show you how to connect this back. Now the way this is designed is the center one is always your common terminal. So the red wire we remember went to common, so we're just gonna connect that back to the center terminal. Our purple was for our fan, so we're just gonna connect that to this higher MFD one. We can do either of these, they're close enough to that five that either of these would work. And then both of our other ones were going to the hermetic pin. So we can connect these to any of these two uh, pins on these two um, measurements. So 10, we have three pins and 20, we have three pins. So I'm just gonna connect my orange wire. Again, if you did not have an easy start, you would just connect the yellow wire and that is it. It's as easy as that to reconnect this. So you can either just use this old one with a longer self-tapping screw that it came with or one that you can purchase from a store or worst case scenario in a pinch, you can set it right here. Just make sure this doesn't make contact with any other electrical components um, and make sure that you do get a strap on it eventually. But I've uh, come upon a lot of units that were just sitting here for years and were not an issue. But that shows you how to wire these in and they're very easy. These are about $100, maybe a little bit less, but I think it's money well spent in that it will cover you in any instance, no matter what capacitor you have. So this will actually work on a capacitor in your furnace. Now in this video, we're not gonna get into the capacitors on a furnace, but they are very similar. They typically just have two pins, a common and a five or a 7.5. So you can use this in any situation. So if your furnace goes down in the middle of winter or in the middle of summer, you can't have air conditioning without your fan running and this can save you in that uh, type of event. Well guys, I hope you found this video informative and that it saves you money in the long run having that knowledge on how to check and replace your capacitor. Now, speaking of saving money, you can sign up for our monthly newsletter where we share with you information on how to maintain and repair your system, how to save money in the long run. And in addition to that, you'll be automatically entered for our monthly giveaway. We've given away full mini split systems, a year's worth of HVAC filters, smart thermostat, the list goes on. So make sure you sign up for our newsletter and you'll automatically be entered for that. Now, if you wanna see something else that's critically important to do with your condensing unit out here in the springtime to make sure that you're ready to go during the summer months, check out this video right here where we show you how to do a thorough deep cleaning of your condenser so you can make sure that it's running efficiently and cooling your home to the best of its ability. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.